So as we have done many times before, we are going to start with our basic block in first. Think back to the no tan and thinking of where those major dark shapes are. And swiftly block in the major direction and movement of those dark shapes. Keeping in mind that we want those darks thin. As I mentioned earlier, keep them thin so that they're richer and you have a chance to see the changes in hue as we make some of our shifts that we're going to make. Because remember, we're going to change from a more purpley blue green to a more blue green. We're going to give the main basic dark pattern first. So it's as if we cropped our broccoli a bit and moved it a little tighter in. And here's our shadow in the hedgerow. This is a pecan tree that is sitting on the edge. So we've got some shadows that move out into the grass. And we have some major shadow areas going on here in the foreground. And I'm going to paint this part very loosely so it can also have some blue in it as well. So there's our purpley green. Now we're going to go for our more blue green shadows. So it will have some nice contrast even in the shadow area. Shadows do not need to be boring. They can be just as visually interesting as the light areas. In fact, I think that's a particular challenge is to make those shadow areas just as interesting as the lighter areas. And one of the reasons I want to put both blue and purple here in this foreground shadow is I want to mix them together a bit and they'll optically blend some, although not very much of that actual color is going to show because they're going to have many more greens on top, but it's a way to tie the foreground to the background. A little bit of the blue over here as well. So those are the basic darks the sort of no tan portion of the painting. Then we are going to, just as we did with our last one, block in where those dark greens go. Our terra verde that has just a little bit of that edge knocked off. Because remember, it is holding this middle ground for us. and actually coming down into the shadow a bit in places. And there is more of it up here at the top. So I'm going to give a little bit of it right now and then we'll come back and put some more in at the very end. There's a top layer there.
Then as we look at the sort of medium to light green, we're going to begin to block some of that in in just a minute. I think we need a little bit more of this more medium green up here. It'll take some of the lighter green on top of it. But having it in place means that we can have a broken area, sort of that flickering you get as light hits the leaves. You see how much it looks like our old friend, the broccoli. And again, I need more of that than I have mixed, so I'm going to have to mix some in just a second. So now we're going to flip this for just a moment so that we can get to this underneath area that's our far distant background. And there is a good deal of green. This painting is almost all green because we have no sky in here. I've gotten up really close. on the subject so that we can concentrate just on the light. Now I'm blocking it in in this color and this value because it's very dark on this side in the background but we can break up that mass of dark green in just a minute with some other greens as well. It's too much of the same color to leave it as that. But that's a block in to just hold that space because it's darker on that side than it is on the right hand side. So right now it still looks like a very abstract painting a very predominantly dark painting because we haven't laid in any of the lights yet. But we're about to start that. So we're going to now put in some of those very light colors that are in the grass. And that grass is our warm, it's going to be some of this, Actually, all of those greens in the top, but I'm going to use this as our base. And it is going to be fairly light all the way into that shadow. I'm going to, have to come back and leave a space for the shadow. And our shadow starts, just as it did in the broccoli, with that same Italian terra verde. And where it crept up into the trunk of the tree, I'm going to scrape that back. So that needs to stay purple. And remember the shadow is broken. It's not a solid. And actually runs all the way to the edge over here. And it gets lighter as it goes out. So I can go back and grab some more of that darker green and let it break up so it reads more as grass. Then I'm going to need to do some of that same thing on both sides. Because that green, that 
sort of base of the tree trunk goes all the way across. If it works better for you, you can turn the panel and hit that right hand side and pull it more in the direction that grass would grow. So you can make the mark go more this way. There we go. Then let's turn it back. So now we've got a really dark, dark mass. And we need to begin to separate it out a little bit more. So let's get some more of that base grass color into the rest of the painting. So establish some of that over on this side. a little bit extra color in there. I wouldn't worry about that at all. It helps to break up the solidity of that green, make it look a little bit more realistic. And we're going to fill this whole shape down here. This is the main color of the grass, keeping it really thin because I'm going to come back on top of it with thicker paint after I've blocked it in, but putting it on thin lets me go into those areas that are darker. Scrape back if I need to. Not pick up too much of that dark paint. I didn't want to. So remember that thin to thick that we've talked about before. Makes life much easier. Make the mark go the direction that gravity pulls. Or, if you're dealing with things that grow, the direction that they grow. And it'll be a lot easier to make it look like whatever that thing basically is. So now I'm going to flip it again so I can get those upper edges and make them look more grass-like. This is something that a lot of people have trouble with. They try to leave it a hard line or paint individual bits of grass. That doesn't work at all. Do not paint, don't even try to paint individual blades of grass. That's not what your eye sees. Your eye sees changes in value and patterns. So I am pulling that dark green, I mean the light green, up into the dark and letting the edge get broken so that it looks a little bit more realistic. As I pick up some of the dark paint on my knife, I take it over and wipe that little bit off. Then I'm going to pull some of the same stuff up into this shadow here. Again, as you start to pick up too much of the dark color that's underneath, wipe the knife, slow down, stop, wipe the knife. Then, I'm going to do some of the same thing on that bottom section. Again, we have to turn it to get that same kind of edge. So, to do that down here, I'm actually going to scrape back some of that dark so it's not quite as thick a paint. And so not as much of it will be picked up. 
because I'm going to actually pull some of that lighter all the way down. So I don't want it to pick up too much of the dark color that's underneath. So I'm going to get that lighter value that we've been working with. And I'm going to pull that on down into here. Because I have scraped that back a lot, it is not going to pick up very much of the dark that's underneath. And it will leave a mark and a pattern that is an abstract sort of symbol, somewhat symbolic, of that grass shape. So I'm hinting at it more than being really literal. If you pick up some of the more bluey purple and bluey green that was in it down there and it mixes in, all the better. I'll add some variety to that lighter green that you've got there. This is a little on the thick side right here, so I'm just going to take the knife and pull that off. So I also want to do some of that scraping back and putting some of the dark back in over, right over here. I want that to be a little bit more purple right there. So adjust as you go. You can pick up that dark. I can kind of do that dance with the knife back and forth. I think y'all heard me say before so that this area over here stays more purple. That is that base trunk of the pecan tree. And then I can pull some of that dark green on top of it and make it a softer edge. Now for the color that is going to go over on this side, that is going to be our lighter, cooler green. So we're going to take some of this lighter, cooler green, and we are going to, ah, too much, lock that in. It is actually overlapping into that base shadow. And it will pick up the dark, so I'm going to wipe lightly. It doesn't remove all the paint, but removes the part that's picked up the dark. And then I can put it on. So that it's getting to fill in that area. Now I'm turning it so that I can adjust the edges on this upper side. up a lot of the dark then, so I have to scrape some of that off. So now we're beginning to see our tree take some shape. And I can re-examine the photo and decide where on that side I need to adjust that color a little bit, that color mass, because we're working with the masses right now. can bring it up a little bit more over there. And there's sort of a dancing pattern that echoes the dark pattern. It's a minor conversation, a minor thread rather than the larger thread 
of the pattern of the dark values. So you have pa all kind of patterns that happen in a painting. You have the pattern of the darks, and you also can have a pattern of the lights. This painting is predominantly dark, so the lights become a sort of subtopic in the painting. And there are going to be some lights right there. And I've dragged the knife or the brush, brush will do the same thing, to let some of that cascade, just like the leaves do, on the branches of the tree. picked up too much paint yet so I can also notice that this same secondary pattern that I was talking about continues over onto this side like that then we have very minor notes of it on the left hand side so we can see it appearing in the top part of this mass right here as it's being hit by the light. There's another section of it. It drops down like that. And a tiny little bit that continues to that upper side. So that's sort of this lyrical movement of that lighter green. Now because this is stopping right there in the center, I don't want it to do that because that's going to create a focal point that's right in the middle. And these are all also starting and stopping in about the same place. So to adjust that, I'm going to bring this up a little bit more and over so that we get rid of that sort of centralization that really can kill a painting. Make it a little bit more asymmetrical. Again, it's still feeling very abstract. We're going to pull it into a little bit more reality by thinking about which side of that tree is catching more of the very light light and it's going to have a little bit warmer green showing. And it's going to be that left hand side just like it was in our still life. So I can drag a little bit of that warmer green that we also used in the grass onto that left hand side and use it to both break up that space a little bit more and begin to add some variation to that lighter green. Then we can also you want to keep adjusting as you go and so you're never totally done until you don't see anything else you want to adjust. Now I want to break up these grasses some. I've noticed in the photograph that there are more neutrals, that sort of neutralized green that I used, where the two different shadow and light colors meet. So I want to take some of this neutralized cinnabar, that's the one we mix the orange with, and I'm going to turn my painting so remember we want it to go the direction that gravity goes. And I'm going to use that for this to break up this band here. Of that lighter area of the grass that's up against the tree. And it is more dominant on that left hand side than the right. 
So I'm not going to put any of it on that shadow. Then I'm going to look and see where I might break up this big mass of green with some more of that warm and blend it a little bit. When you look closely, it's warmer on the left hand side than the right. They're almost always going to have a transition from left to right in a landscape as well as from top to bottom or a still life or any other observational painting for that matter. So I'm going to over here begin to break up this big green mass with a color that is a nice strong contrast. Now I don't want it to be as dominant as this green over here. So I'm going to want to blend it just a hair more. Apply a little bit more pressure as I lay down the mark so that it begins to break it up some. Then I can think about where else I might want to put some of that and mix it in a little bit more. And I can see that there's an area right here that looks like it is a blend of the two. If I need to pull back, bring back some of the green, I can do that by going on top. And gently pulling it over where there appears to be a little bit too much pink or if it's become too regular and hard a line. Now by the time I start doing this I got a lot of paint on that panel and that's okay. But I'm beginning to break that shape up some more and I still want to break it up even a little bit more. And I want to tie the color in the tree. Right now, this green in the tree is very separate from the greens that I see in the grass. So I want to have a little bit of that cooler green, like green, in the grass as well. So I'm going to use a little of that right here on this edge to give it another transition from left to right. And you're going to have to turn the painting in order to be able to pull it up and create that softened kind of grass-like edge. And when I turn it back down, now you see how this side of the painting now begins to relate to this side way more than it did before. So it's really important to keep thinking about balancing from left to right as well as top to bottom. So break that up again a little bit if I need to. Now this area over on the left hand side right here this mass needs to be broken up and I'm going to break it up by blending in some of that warm neutral as almost a shadowed area and it's not going to have as much distinction as much change in that shape as the ones down here but it's going to move across that area and break it up some. Now the next thing that I want to do, the thing that's bothering me about the painting, this is still just like our earlier second note up here was a little too centralized. This dark shadow of the pecan tree is still a little too centralized. So I'm going to scrape out some of this dark and I want to make it a little bit more asymmetrical so that it is not as geared towards the center as it was. Now 
And I can pull some of that purple down into the shadow area. And do a little bit of dance back and forth between that darker green and the purpley green. And just as I turned it to pull that lighter green up into a more grass-like shape, I can do the same thing with the darker green. Where do I need to make an adjustment still? Well, one of the areas that I see that still needs some adjusting is right down here towards the bottom. It's still a little too much on that dark side. So I can take some of my darker green. And I can pull some of it into the dark. So it doesn't look like quite such a sudden jump in value. And then we can also see that there is a lighter area, even in this green, that we could add. It's also a contrast to this green over here. And we might see some areas we want to pull in some of that darker green into that big mass at the top to break it up a little bit more even. So I'm thinking that I want to go into this area, pull it away again from the center. So I'm trying to adjust the composition a little bit as I go. See how thick that paint was there? And looking right over here, I think I'm going to leave that part alone. Maybe adjust a little bit, tiny little bit more on into this upper section. Look how hard those edges are right now. Not going to stay that way at all. So this dance back and forth between the dark and the light, adjusting as we go. So I can scrape it back if I need to adjust those shapes. Then take some of our purpley green and go up in there. And don't forget, wipe that knife. and adjust that shape so it's not so centralized. So it's a more interesting breakup of space. Then if I want to, I can adjust this green just a hair to break it up a little bit. So that's what I mean by the dance back and forth. You don't lose anything by scraping back out. You break it up and make it a little bit more interesting shape when you do that. So I think it's important to give yourself permission to do those things. Go for it. You're not going to hurt the painting. Risk is part of the painting process. Those who take no risks make no good paintings. Keep that in mind. So the last thing that I think I want to do, at least for right now, until I stare at it again is to add another light value, an even lighter value, onto the tree's foliage itself, mainly to keep breaking up that space a little bit more and keep it from being too centralized. So I want the part of the tree that is catching the most light to become a little lighter. 
and a little warmer. So this is that cinnabar green light that has just a tiny little bit of our orange in it to knock the very bare edge off of it. And I am placing it on the tree. It's going on really thickly. And I'm putting it on the tree where the lightest lights are going to be. So think about, like in the broccoli, where the highlights are, where the light part of the shape is catching light. So it's going to be right on that section. A tiny little bit over here. A very tiny little bit. So just to recap what we've been working on in this demo, we have taken what we have learned from working with our simple still life of the broccoli and a studio setup with direct overhead light and translated that into working from a photograph of a uh, landscape with strong direct overhead light. So you can see from the similar compositions, we're dealing with a similar lighting situation, a similar light key, and we have translated that into a more complex landscape painting based off of what we learned in our simple still life painting. Hope this has helped you understand the basic light key for a direct overhead light, whether you're working with a still life figure or a landscape, and hope that you will post the results of your uh, work on this assignment over in the Facebook group, as well as any questions that you may have. Happy painting!